So it's important that they're buying a ration that's designed for that finishing period and um, that's suitable for those higher feeding levels. So that should have an appropriate mineral spec then within it. So we're avoiding high levels of magnesium and phosphorus. And um, I suppose that's where the risk of utilizing other sheep feeds will have more of those minerals in it. And uh, we want ammonium chloride in there, particularly for our, our ram lambs to minimize the risk of uh, urinary calculi. And um, so that's very important. And I suppose it's just risk of buffers counteracting that uh, benefit of ammonium chloride in there. So uh, we want to avoid those as well. Hello, I'm Kieran Lynch and welcome to Lovecast, the Chocolate Sheep Podcast. Each episode will bring you less insights, advice and technical updates for the sheep industry. Now at this stage of season, more and more lambs will be finished intensively indoors, so we're joined by Chocolate's room nutrition specialist Ashley Claffey as we discuss lamb finishing rations. Ashley discusses ration spec and highlights some of the key areas to look out for when choosing a finishing ration, highlighting the importance of correct formulation. We have all discussed feed management, we're Ashley offering our tips on troubleshooting potential issues to avoid any dip in performance. We hear now from Ashley. First of all, we want to be looking at the quality of the rations we're buying, um, particularly um, during that finishing period with very high costs involved. Uh, so we're looking at a high energy ration, a uh, minimum 0.94 UFL. So we're looking for good quality cereal ingredients in there, the likes of maize and barley in particular, um, as they're not as rapidly digestible as wheat, um, or you can use oats. The likes of our beet pulp as a digestible fibre source, but that's still quite high in energy. And then our good quality protein sources, the likes of our soybean meal, distillers grains or rapeseed there as an option as well. And the likes of our distillers grain and uh, rapeseed are probably better value at the moment. Um, Soy is probably more expensive, so probably focus more on that for our um, pre-lamb and diets. And we can look at alternative protein sources for from a finishing point of view. I suppose we have we have to go back to basics on this. When we look at our ration spec, we've the ingredients on the back of it. It's always in the sending order. We might know the exact mix in it. Some millers might give it here, but it also draws up the point that there is big variation out there at the moment in the price of rations we're getting. Some of that is better value. Some of it is due to the fact of what the ingredients are in it. So we could have some fillers in there bringing down the price for it. So just because the price is at the right point might necessarily mean it's a good ration. It's important to check that label and look for the descending order ingredients like you indicated. Yeah, so look, there is a huge variation out there and that will depend on whether you're buying a nut or a ration and the type of ingredients. Um, I suppose we don't want to be just focusing on the cost if if there's poor quality ingredients to give a, a least cost formulation. There's not a huge benefit benefit from that. So we do need to be focusing on the ingredient list, uh, taking an opportunity to look at the labels. And I suppose buying an ration that's appropriate then for for the type of finishing you're doing. So if you're going to higher feed rates that you're buying a suitable ration for that as well. We might come on to discuss a bit more of that in a moment. Look, you, you mentioned a kind of energy spec there. I suppose protein is the other thing we look at. Is there any difference in the protein level we should be looking for depending on the type of lamb we're finishing? Yeah, so I suppose it depends on what weights we're putting those lambs into the shed at. Uh, if we have ones that are really in, in a finishing range, hitting that 40 kilos at this stage, um, a 12% crew protein is more than adequate for those. They don't have the same demand for protein at that stage. They're just laying down flesh. They haven't got the same growth requirements. So um, that's adequate in that those scenarios. And there's a cost to protein um, ingredients. They tend to be dearer um, and there's a waste it there if if they're not required so um if we're looking at um lighter lambs going in um really 14 to 16 percent crew protein in that scenario to just encourage that growth so the ones that need a bit more grow maybe the ones outside before they come in that's where a higher protein ration will come in and we, we see that variation out there and what's been sold yeah yeah no it just depends on the type of stock you have i suppose look I, i'll throw the, and this question off comes up in terms of pellet head versus loose i suppose for nutritionally, there's not really much of a difference. Um, it's probably more a management benefit. Yeah, sure. Look, I suppose in terms of a pelleted ration, everything is bound inside the pellet. So I suppose you better security and that you're not losing minerals um, or some of your dear ingredients like soy or those ground ingredients. Um, but yeah, a loose ration from a quality point of view, there's no issue. It's just the management of it. And I suppose it's like birds coming into a shed and that as well. I suppose it depends on what way you're feeding it as well, whether you have... Um, ad lib feeding trots where they're maybe a bit more covered or if you're uh, leaving it exposed as well look we can touch on the energy we touched on the protein the pellet and the mineral content in that ration too I suppose this depends on the level we're feeding that too but for those going ad lib finishing or more intensive finishing it's important that we have a proper mineral in there 
Yeah, so it's important that they're buying a ration that's designed for that finishing period and um, that's suitable for those higher feeding levels. Um, so that should have an appropriate mineral spec then within it. So we're avoiding high levels of magnesium and phosphorus. And um, I suppose that's where the risk of utilising other sheep feeds will have more of those minerals in it. Uh, we want ammonium chloride in there, um, particularly for our, our ram lambs to minimise the risk of uh, urinary calculi. Um, so that's very important. And I suppose just risk of buffers counteracting that uh, benefit of ammonium chloride in there. So uh, we want to avoid those as well. Um, salt is another alternative, but I suppose it depends on bedding then. If you're on straw bed and high water intake, it can um, increase the um, amount of urine there. So that makes it harder to keep bed management right and keep stock clean and dry. The, pre- the preference will be for the ammonia chlorine ration. I think, look, by and large, most will have gone that way. Um, look, for those home mix and maybe are feeding someone their own ration at lower levels, less than half a kilo, they can probably get away a little bit more without including that mineral in it. They can, but I suppose it's something to be conscious of, like minerals are there and they're important for overall health and performance. Um, but I suppose it's getting the balance right um, and, and buying a suitable mineral if you're going to be uh, incorporating it into your own mix. Ration is one thing. Feed management, we all know, can have a massive impact. You can have the best ration in the world, but if the feed management isn't right, I suppose if you're troubleshooting, Ashley, what are the couple of key things we need to look at in terms of feed management? First and foremost is access to clean water source and getting feed space right so that you're allowing animals um, maximum opportunity to access feed and uh, get achieve a suitable level of performance. Then we're looking at having a long source of forage available at all times. Uh, in an ad lib scenario, appropriate management in terms of building that up. So we're starting lambs at maybe 250, 300 grams um, to begin with. And then every couple of days, we're building that up gradually uh, by 150, 200 grams until we reach our ad lib scenario. Uh, so that generally will take about a fortnight. Um, we also want to ensure that um, our trots and feeders are clean and that... Um, we're avoiding stale feed as well, so that um, while we want constant access to meal in an ad lib scenario, um, if it's drying out in the troughs, that we change that over. And, and same with our forage, like we don't want to leave uh, to excess amounts of forage going around and, and it starts to heat or becomes unpalatable. So um, clean uh, and regular cleaning out of feed troughs and uh, fresh meal and forage. Look, that risk of acidosis can't be underestimated. And um, whereas the vast majority of lambs might be fine in the pen. There is little things there. There could be shy feeders in it. There could be ones that just got too much access to it at one time. I suppose, actually, like, we need to be careful and just actually observe the lambs too if they're not eating or if they're going off and they might be managed separately. Yeah, yeah, it's essential that we're herding animals at least morning and evening, um, particularly if you're working on farm. And that I suppose if they're in sheds that you have appropriate lighting that you can observe those animals properly this time of year. The evenings are gone dark, so um, have appropriate lighting and sheds that you're getting a good chance to look at stock. Um, particularly I suppose once you get to that ad lib scenario where you're not actually going in and feeding animals twice a day um, so that you're observing every animal in the pen um, but in that build up scenario particularly focus on uh, the lambs that seem to be shy uh, coming to the feeders or maybe aren't eating feed and, and pull them off the group um, and that they've appropriate trot space to allow uh, every animal access to the feed so you're looking at about 30 centimetres uh, per head feed allowance I suppose we want to also be conscious of the weight variation in the group when we're housing them as well. So we try to keep our lighter lambs together. Um, it'll make it easier in terms of drafting those animals as they pro- approach finishing as well. Um, because, look, you're in a high cost scenario. You don't want to be letting lambs go over spec or uh, over carcass weights and maybe potentially not get fed for that as well. So, Ashley, like, when the thing is going well in that lib, you will get high performance. And suppose with high performance, we also have high cost. So it's important to keep a check on how those lambs are doing. Yeah, so I suppose that's why it's important to have them appropriately grouped. It'll make it easier to manage uh, picking out those uh, lambs that are on target and and ready for drafting out. I suppose there's variation in terms of animal intake as well in any group of of stock. So that's something to be conscious of. Like if we have um, lambs eating an average of 1.5 kilos a meal, there could be some lambs only eating a kilo and other animals achieving two kilos of intake. So it's important that um, we're paying attention to um, fat cover and condition on lambs and pulling out lambs on time because it, like you mentioned it's a high cost scenario like actually some of the stuff you touched on there like the basics of keeping fresh water there, that's obviously a big impact and foremost access to fibre is a big impact something can happen when you have that system up and going you know 
we can see a ration maybe coming in at a cheaper price. The risk of changing ration when you've that system set up in an ad lib scenario, that is a high risk strategy. Yeah, look, um, I suppose the makeup of your ration could be completely different. So you want to avoid uh, any changing in that scenario. I suppose if it's saying that you're bringing in different batches, it might be an option to start a different batch on a different ration. But once you have a group into that scenario, like it's a short term period, once if they're achieving high performance, you could have lambs out of out in 35 to 40 days if they're going in on target um so i stick with what you're doing keep things as consistent as possible in terms of access to water and keep it clean uh, access to feed constantly and clean for clean fresh forage as well um but yeah keep things simple and straightforward and avoid any changes particularly when things are going well Ashley, look it was a good update it's certainly time at the moment thanks very much for coming on i'm sure we'll have you back again Ross. perfect thanks very much Karen. I'll leave it there for this week's episode. A very useful update from Ashley at this stage of the season, highlighting some of the key areas we need to pay attention to when we're choosing the finishing ration. That's it for me for updates from our sheep programme. Keep an eye on our Twitter page at Charlie Sheep. I'm Kieran Lynch. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe and follow us wherever you get your podcasts.